Greetings, current students, alumni, future students, Scrum practitioners, both current and future. Welcome to Scrum Academy, where our mission is to cultivate borderless, borderless impact by driving agile transformations across geographical, cultural, and social boundaries. We are here to empower and equip you with the very best in class Scrum education, mindset, and tools. As part of our commitment to your growth, we offer a range of exclusive proprietary classes, including the Serial Scrum Master, <laughs> Scrum and Travel, or even better, why don't we travel and Scrum? Then what about Scrum for Entrepreneurs and more? At Scrum Academy, we foster an inclusive and diverse community guiding you on a path to becoming legendary in fostering innovation and achieving sustainable success in this profession. We believe in the importance of financial prosperity, building high-performing teams, and making time to enjoy the things that you love. However, none of this would be possible without a solid foundation in the Scrum Guide. That's why we have chosen to enhance your learning experience by providing insightful commentary throughout. Our aim is to bring the Scrum Guide to life, catalyzing your journey towards mastery. Just like buying a can of Campbell's condensed soup won't satisfy your hunger until it's cooked with added water, simply reading the Scrum Guide won't fully nourish your understanding. Our commentary will add flavor, like Lowry seasoned salt, yeah, and depth, making the concepts more tangible and applicable. So get ready to embark on this exciting journey through the Scrum Guide with our commentary. Together, we will unpack its principle, explore its intricacies, and ignite your curiosity. Our goal is to help you internalize the concepts, unleash your creativity, and empower you to apply Scrum principles effectively in any situation. Let's dive into the Scrum Guide, enriching our understanding and unlocking our potential. Get ready to embrace a transformative learning experience that will propel you towards scrum mastery and enable you to create a lasting impact in your professional and personal life. Welcome to Scrum Academy, where we empower, we equip, and we foster your journey. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is an English audiobook version as read and commentated by Grand Scrum Master Scott Adams, professional scrum trainer of scrum.org, Copyright, Ken Schraber and Jeff Sutherland, 2020. This publication is offered for license under the attribution share like license of Creative Commons, accessible online and also described in summary form online by utilizing the Scrum Guide. You acknowledge and agree that you have read and agreed to be bound by the terms of the attribution share like license of Creative Commons. The Scrum Guide, the definitive guide to Scrum. Ladies and gentlemen, do you like to play games? Because if you like to play games, you should do very, very well in Scrum. Why is that? Because the remainder of that sentence is the rules of the game. So let me say it again. The Scrum Guide, the definitive guide to Scrum, the rules of the game. This is a game we're playing, ladies and gentlemen. But oftentimes, Scrum practitioners of those who are coming into this space really don't understand the game that we are playing. So as we go through the guy, keep that in mind. What game are we playing? I like games, Scott. But what kind of games are we playing? Let's see if we can't reveal that for you today. The purpose of the Scrum Guide. We developed Scrum in the early 1990s. We wrote the first version of the Scrum Guide in 2010 to help people worldwide understand Scrum. We have evolved the guide since then through small functional updates. Together, we stand behind it. The Scrum Guide contains the definition of Scrum. Each element of the framework serves a specific purpose that is essential to the overall value and results realized with Scrum. Changing the core design of ideas of Scrum, leaving out elements or not following the rules of Scrum, covers up problems and limits the benefits of Scrum, potentially even rendering it useless. Let's pause there for a moment. 
oftentimes I find that companies I join, teams I join, they use Scrum as a la carte. Scrum is not a la carte. Let me go back and recap a few things that were said thus far. Each element of the framework serves a specific purpose. It is the bare minimum for us to do and call this and say we play in this game called Scrum. We follow the growing use of Scrum within an ever growing complex world. We are humbled to see Scrum being adopted in many domains holding essentially complex work. Beyond software product development where Scrum has its roots, as Scrum uses spread, developers, researchers, analysts, scientists, and other specialists do the work. We use the word developers in Scrum not to exclude, but to simplify. If you get value from Scrum, consider yourself included. We talk about different domains in that paragraph. Researchers, analysts, scientists, those are specific roles. But let's talk about other domains. I don't know where Scrum has not penetrated yet. Ghana Police Department uses Scrum to reduce crime. Scrum was made for IT and software development specifically years ago. It has crossed different domains like manufacturing, healthcare, education. I'm a professor at Wilmington University. I use it in my classroom. The university uses it across the entire campus. I don't know of a domain yet that Scrum has not penetrated. Even within companies, HR is using it. Marketing department is using it. Sales department is using it. I see Scrum everywhere. As Scrum is being used, patterns, processes, and insights that fit the Scrum framework as described in this document may be found, applied, and devised. Their description is beyond the purpose of the Scrum Guide because they are context-sensitive and differ widely between Scrum users. Such tactics for using the Scrum framework vary widely and are described elsewhere. Scrum Definition Scrum is a lightweight framework that helps people, teams, and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions for complex problems. In a nutshell, Scrum requires a Scrum master to foster an environment where, one, a product owner orders the work for a complex problem into a product backlog. Two, the Scrum team turns a selection of the work into an increment of value during a sprint. Three, the Scrum team and its stakeholders inspect the results and adjust for the next sprint. Four, repeat. Scrum is simple. Try it as is and determine if its philosophy, theory, and structure help to achieve goals and create value. The Scrum framework is purposefully incomplete, only defining the parts required to implement Scrum theory. Scrum is built upon by the collective intelligence of the people using it. Rather than provide people with detailed instructions, the rules of Scrum guide their relationships and interactions. Various processes, techniques, and methods can be employed within the framework. Scrum wraps around existing practices or renders them unnecessary. Scrum makes visible the relative efficacy of current management, environment, work techniques, so that improvements can be made. Scrum is simple. Try it as is and determine if its philosophy, theory, and structure helps to achieve and create value. In most environments, we have a term called mechanical scrum, which means what? It means you're using scrum as all our cart. It means you're not using all of scrum as it was intended. Hey, why don't we try it as is versus trying to modify it? Another point I want to highlight in the scrum definition is notice that it is a framework. Part of my goals of doing this is to help spark your curiosity. Ask the scrum guy a question. It will reveal itself. It will take you on a little journey to seek out the answer. One question I will pose for you, if you don't know, is what is the difference between a framework, which Scrum is, versus a methodology? What is the difference? Some homework for you. And the other thing I want to highlight is because it's a framework, you may need other things, which we call complementary practices. Start out using Scrum as laid out in the scrum guide and let that be your guide to what do we need to do next through your continuous improvement opportunities.
Then the other thing I want to highlight is that notice scrums makes visible. What does that mean? To make transparent your current processes, your current culture. We call that an impediment or could be an impediment, a blocker. A scrum does a great job in terms of raising those impediments so that we can figure out what we need to do to get to our ultimate destination, whatever that may be for your environment. Scrum theory. Scrum is founded on empiricism and lean thinking. Empiricism asserts that knowledge comes from experience and making decisions based upon what is observed. Lean thinking reduces waste and focus on the essentials. Scrum employs an iterative, incremental approach to optimize predictability and to control risk. Scrum engages groups of people who collectively have all the skills and expertise to do the work and share or acquire such skills as needed. Scrum combines four formal events for inspection and adaptation within a containing event, the sprint. These events work because they implement the empirical Scrum pillars of transparency inspection, and adaptation. Transparency. The emergent process. What does emergent mean? Something for you to research. The emergent process and work must be visible to those performing the work as well as those receiving the work. With Scrum, important decisions are based upon the perceived state of its three formal artifacts. Artifacts that have low transparency can lead to decisions that diminish value and increase risk. Transparency enables inspection. Inspection without transparency is misleading and wasteful. So one way that we can decrease risk in Scrum is to increase transparency. Did you catch that? Inspection. The Scrum artifacts and the progress towards agreed goals must be inspected frequently and diligently to detect potentially undesirable variances or problems. To help with inspection, Scrum provides cadence in the form of its five events. What is cadence? Rhythm. Rhythm. Beat of the drum. Inspection enables adaptation. Inspection without adaptation is considered pointless. Scrum events are designed to provoke change. Adaptation. If any aspects of a process deviate outside acceptable limits, or if the resulting product is unacceptable, the process being applied or the material being produced must be adjusted. The adjustment must be made as soon as possible to minimize further deviation. Scott, you telling me we don't have to wait till we update our definition of done at the sprint retrospective? That's exactly what I'm telling you. If we see something that's wrong, we need to go ahead and fix it immediately. We don't have to wait till an event happens. We can do it in real time when the problem occurs. Adaptation becomes more difficult when the people involved are not empowered or self-managing. A scrum team is expected to adapt the moment it learns anything new through inspection. Scrum values. Successful use of scrum depends on people becoming more proficient in living five values. Commitment, focus, openness, respect, and courage. The Scrum team commits to achieving its goals and to supporting each other. Their primary focus is on the work of the sprint to make the best possible progress towards these goals. The Scrum team and its stakeholders are open about the work and the challenges. Scrum team members respect each other to be capable, independent people and are respected as such by the people with whom they work. The Scrum team members have the courage to do the right thing to work on tough problems. These values give directions to the scrum team with regard to their work, actions, and behavior, and behavior, and behavior. The decisions that are made 
The steps taken and the way Scrum is used should reinforce these values, not diminish or undermine them. The Scrum team members learn and explore the values as they work with the Scrum events and artifacts. When these values are embodied by the Scrum team and the people they work with, the empirical Scrum pillars of transparency, inspection, and adaptation come to life, building trust. To me, the most important part of Scrum are the values. If you think about a great team that you've ever been a part of, were they committed to achieving the goal? Were they laser focused on trying to get there? Was that great team that you was a part of, were they open about their work or their deficiencies? Did you respect one another on that great team, whether it's school, whether it's sports, whether it's church, whatever your environment looks like? Also important, courage. Did you have the courage to call people out when necessary? Did you have the courage to, there's an elephant in our room. An elephant belongs in the jungle. Why is there an elephant in our room? Why is there an elephant in our organization? Why is there an elephant on our scrum team? Everybody's walking by it, but nobody's talking about it. So I have the courage to talk about the elephant in the room, which is a metaphor that the elephant should not be in your room. It should be in the zoo or in the wild. There's no place for an elephant in the room. Doesn't belong there. Scrum values also reveal what is the game that we're playing here? What is the game that we're playing here? The first page told us that we play in a game. But what is the game? What is the game about? To begin to understand what the game about you can find that in the third paragraph under the Scrum Values. These values give direction to the Scrum team with regards to their work, how we do our work, our actions, how we act in trying to get this work done, our behaviors. Well, what behavior? Well, I pose this question to you. Do you know why the Scrum Guide was created in the first place? Do you know why the Manifesto of Agile Software Development was created in the first place? Then that will help you understand this one sentence at a very, very high and intimate level. Scott, are you telling me we're in a behavior game? Yes, this game is about changing behavior. Behavior from what? Behavior from being told what to do, how to do, when to do. And empower you to unleash your superpower. That superpower that only your God-given talent, that superpower, that behavior. Some great books on the subject would be Atomic Habits. If that's too much of a read for you, start out simple. Something that you can read in two or three hours. Who Moved My Cheese is a book about changing behavior. Again, the first book is Atomic Habits. Behavior. The second book is a shorter read. You can complete that in two or three hours. That is called Who Moved My Cheese? Quick, easy read for you to help you begin to explore on that one sentence and for it to come to life for you. Scrum team. The fundamental unit of Scrum is a small team of people, a Scrum team. The Scrum team consists of one Scrum master, one product owner, and developers. Within a scrum team, there are no sub-teams or hierarchies. It is a cohesive unit of professionals focused on one objective at a time, the product goal. Scrum teams are cross-functional, meaning the members have all the skills necessary to create value each sprint. They are also self-managing, meaning they internally decide who does what, when, and how. The Scrum team is small enough to remain nimble and large enough to complete significant work within a sprint, typically 10 or fewer people. In general, we have found that smaller Scrum teams communicate better and are more productive. If Scrum teams become too large, they should consider reorganizing into multiple cohesive Scrum teams, each focused 
on the same product. Therefore, they should share the same product goal, product backlog, and product owner. The Scrum team is responsible for all product-related activities from stakeholder collaboration, verification, maintenance, operations, experimentation, research, and development, and anything else that might be required. They are structured and empowered by the organization to manage their own work. Is that what it looked like in your environment? If not, we got a little work to do. Working in sprints at a sustainable pace improve the Scrum team's focus and consistency. The entire Scrum team is accountable for creating a valuable, useful increment every sprint. Scrum defines three specific accountabilities within the Scrum team, the developers, the product owner, and the Scrum master. Developers. Developers are the people in the Scrum team that are committed to creating any aspect of a usable increment each sprint. The specific skills needed by the developers are often broad and will vary with the domain of work. However, the developers are always accountable for, I repeat that again. However, the developers are always accountable for creating a plan for the sprint the sprint backlog, instilling quality by adhering to a definition of done, adapting their plan each day towards the sprint goal and holding each other accountable as professionals. Product owner. The product owner is accountable for maximizing the value of the product resulting from the work of the scrum team. How this is done may vary widely across organization, Scrum teams and individuals. The product owner is also accountable for effective product backlog management, which includes developing and explicitly communicating the product goal, creating and clearly communicating product backlog items, ordering product backlog items, and ensuring that the product backlog is transparent, visible, and understood. Was Scott understood by whom? That's a good question for you to answer. I look forward to hearing your answer. The product owner may do the above work or delegate the responsibility to others. Let's pause there for a moment. If you're in an environment where you may have project managers or business analysts, typically in the environments that I have been in, they are helping the product owner out to manage the product backlog. Now let's go to the next slide. Regardless, the product owner remains accountable. Okay, let's take a step back. The developers are responsible for creating their sprint backlog. The product owner owns the product backlog. So the product owner can have some other people working on these items, which is fine, but at the beginning of the day, during the day, at night, all day, the product owner owns it. Something to think about. For the product owner to succeed, the entire organization must respect their decisions. These decisions are visible in the content and ordering of the product backlog and through the inspectable increment at the sprint review. The product owner is one person, not a committee. The product owner may represent the needs of many stakeholders in the product backlog. Those wanting to change the product backlog can do so by trying to convince the product owner. Now, let me pause there for a moment. As I read that and I think about the product owner, the words, the images that come in my mind, I'm thinking about maybe a CEO, mini CEO of the Scrum team. I'm thinking about an entrepreneur. From the standpoint, that person sounds like to me, they should be making decisions as if they're spending their own money. Liking to an entrepreneur. The other thing I want to highlight there for you is stakeholders. It might be of value for you to ask that question to your scrum team. What do we mean by stakeholders? I come from project management world. There is a difference in stakeholders and customers already identified. And scrum, we just say stakeholders. So it might be advantageous for you to make sure that everybody understands that when we're talking about stakeholders, does that include customers? 
just to make sure everybody's on the same operational definition. That word here in Scrum is just a blanket word, something for you to think about. Scrum Master. The Scrum Master is accountable for establishing Scrum as defined in the Scrum Guide. I will repeat that. The Scrum Master is accountable for establishing Scrum as defined in the Scrum Guide. They do this by helping everyone understand Scrum theory and practice both within the team and the organization. The Scrum Master is accountable for the Scrum team's effectiveness. Question for you. What do we mean by that? What is effectiveness? It's a good question. I look forward to hearing your answer. They do this by enabling the Scrum team to improve its practices within the Scrum framework. Scrum masters are true leaders. That is a new word in the 2020 guide. Before that, it was actually servant leader. I still love servant leader. True leader is a bit vague. The point of it here is you are a leader. You're not a manager. You're not a team boss. None of those things. You are a leader. So I want you to visualize the essence of a true leader. And that will be you as a scrum master in terms of the context of this meaning. Scrum masters are true leaders who serve the scrum team and the larger organization. The scrum master serves the scrum team in several ways, including coaching the team members in self-management and cross-functionality. Helping the Scrum team focus on creating high value increments that meet the definition of done. Causing the removal. Let me repeat that again. Causing the removal. I'll repeat that one more time. Causing the removal of impediments to the Scrum team's progress. Do we specifically have to remove the impediment? Maybe there's something we can do to cause the removal of the impediment. I'm pretty sure that's something that we all can do with Scrum Masters to cause the removal of the impediment. Oh, Scrum Master is responsible for removing impediments. I agree and disagree. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends. So let's have a good conversation about that. I'm reading this. Well, no, we call the removal of impediments to the Scrum team progress. Slightly different, but it's a much holistic outcome. We cause the removal of impediments versus just being the only person on the team responsible for removing impediments. There is a big difference and there will be a big different outcome with each of those strategies, techniques, and approaches. Ensuring that all Scrum events take place are positive, productive, and kept within a time box. Ensuring that all events take place. Are you reading the same thing I'm reading? Does it say that we have to facilitate every event? As a scrum master, that's not what I'm reading. What I'm reading, it says, ensuring that all scrum events take place are positive, productive, and kept within a time box. Fair enough. Scrum master serves the product owner in several ways, including helping find techniques for effective product goal definition and product backlog management, helping the scrum team understand the need for clear and concise product backlog items, helping establish empirical product planning for a complex environment and facilitating stakeholder collaboration as requested or needed. The Scrum Master served the organization in several ways, including leading, training, and coaching the organization in a Scrum adoption. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, most Scrum Masters I see, they never get beyond serving their local team. Most of them serve the scrum team and the product owner, which are the first two sections of a scrum master's accountabilities. But what about the last one in which we talked about now? We leading, training, coaching the organization in a scrum adoption. How many of you are doing that? How many of you in your career have done that? How many of you may be in an environment that have agile coaches that do that as well. Interesting. Planning and advising Scrum implementations within the organization. Helping employees and stakeholders understand and enact an empirical approach for complex work and removing barriers between stakeholders and Scrum teams. Scrum events. The sprint is a container for all other events. Each event and Scrum is a formal opportunity to inspect 
and adapt Scrum artifacts. These events are specifically designed to enable the transparency required. Failure to operate any events as prescribed results in lost opportunities to inspect and adapt. Events are used in Scrum to create regularity and to minimize the need for meetings not defined in Scrum. Optim all events are held at the same time and place to reduce complexity. Those are by rules of engagement in terms of the events. Just give us a guide of some things that we need to be thinking about as we uh, begin to plan out the events that we get ready to go over next. The sprint. Sprints are the heartbeat of Scrum, where ideas are turned into value. They are fixed lengths of one month or less to create consistency. A new sprint starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint. Now, for those of you who may be new to this space, you know the Scrum Guide says there are five events. But what you may not know is that your physical body only goes to four events because the sprint represents time. It is a container for all of the other events. So if I may help you in your journey to really understand what the sprint is, if you have never been in this environment, let me change a word for you and reread it again. Hopefully that will help. A new sprint starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint. As I forestated, the sprint represents time. So let me just go back and reread that sentence and replace it with one word. A new month starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous month. Do you go to a month? No. Do you go to a day? No. Do you go to a week? No. We don't go to time. Time exists. So i read it again. A new sprint starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint. All the work necessary to achieve the product goal, including sprint planning, Daily scrums, sprint review, and sprint retrospective happen within sprints. During the sprint, no changes are made that will endanger the sprint goal. Quality does not decrease. The product backlog is refined as needed and scope may be clarified and renegotiated with the product owner as more is learned. Sprints enable predictability by ensuring inspection and adaptation of progress towards a product goal. At least every calendar month, when a sprint's horizon is too long, the sprint goal may become invalid. Complexity may arise. The risk may increase. Shorter sprints can be employed to generate more learning cycles and limit risk of cost and effort to a smaller time frame. Each sprint may be considered a short project. Various practices exist to forecast progress, like burn downs, burn ups, accumulative flows. While proven useful, these do not replace the importance of empiricism. In complex environments, what will happen is unknown. Only what has already happened may be used for forward-looking decision-making. A sprint could be canceled if the sprint goal becomes obsolete. Only the product owner has the authority to cancel the sprint. Sprint planning. Sprint planning initiates the sprint by laying out the work to be performed for the sprint. This resulting plan is created by the collaborative work of the entire scrum team. The product owner ensures that attendees are prepared to discuss the most important product backlog items and how they map to the product goal. The scrum team may also invite other people to attend sprint planning to provide advice. Sprint planning addresses the following topics. Topic one, why is this sprint valuable? The product owner proposes how the product increase its value and utility in the current sprint. The whole Scrum team then collaborates to define a sprint goal that communicates why the sprint is valuable to stakeholders. The sprint goal must be finalized prior to the end of sprint planning. 
Topic two, what can be done this sprint? Through discussions with the product owner, the developer select items from the product backlog to include in the current sprint. The Scrum team may refine these items during this process, which increases understanding and confidence. Selecting how much can be completed within a sprint may be challenging. However, the more the developers know about their past performance, their upcoming capacity, and their definition of done, the more confident they will be in their sprint forecast. Topic two, notice that developers are selecting their own work, which is supporting a principle in Scrum called self-management, which we already talked about and highlighted. So are y'all beginning to see how things are complementary to each other? It permeates throughout the entire language, how we operate, how we move in. It's all supportive. We said it earlier, and now you can see self-management in play. How do we know? Well, developers selected their own work. That is what self-managing looks like. They selected their own work. Let's go to topic three. How will the chosen work get done? For each selected product backlog item, the developers plan the work necessary to create an increment that meets the definition of done. This is often done by decomposing product backlog items into smaller work items of one day or less. How this is done is at the sole discretion of the developers. No one else tells them how to turn product backlog items into increments of value. The sprint goal. The product backlog items selected for the sprint plus the plan for delivering them are together referred to as the sprint backlog. Sprint planning is time boxed to a maximum of eight hours for a one month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. One of the things I'm going to do is include a glossary here so that you can understand the vocabulary. For those of you who may be new to a time box, a time box in Scrum means that we have a maximum amount of time to get something done. All events have a time box, and that's what we mean. I will put a glossary in the description to make sure that you have that for future reference so that you could uh, deep dive into some of the terminology that is here in this document. Daily Scrum. The purpose of Daily Scrum is to inspect progress towards the sprint goal and adapt the sprint backlog as necessary, adjusting the upcoming play and work. The Daily Scrum is a 15-minute event for the developers of the Scrum team to reduce complexity. It is held at the same time and place every working day of the sprint. If the product owner or the scrum master are actively working on items in the sprint backlog, they participate as developers. The developers can select whatever structure and techniques they want as long as their daily scrum focuses on progress towards the sprint goal and produces an actionable plan for the next day of work. This creates focus, which is a value of Scrum, and improve self-management. Daily Scrums improve communication, identify impediments, promote quick decision-making, and consequently eliminate the need for other meetings. The Daily Scrum is not the only time developers are allowed to adjust their plan. Remember what we said earlier in empiricism category? If we see something that's not right in terms of the process, when can we change it? Scott, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. You're welcome. Just a reminder, if we see something that's wrong, we want to go ahead and fix it in real time. We don't need to wait. We got a, a meeting coming up two days from now. No, no, you don't need to wait two days. If there's something wrong now, let's fix it now so that we can get back on the right track and so that we can accomplish our goals and objectives. We don't have to wait to a formal event to make corrections. The Daily Scrum is not the only time developers are allowed to adjust their plan. They often meet throughout the day for more detailed discussions about adapting or replanning the rest of the sprint's work. Sprint Review The purpose of the sprint review is to inspect the outcome of the sprint and determine future adaptations. The Scrum team presents the results of their work to key stakeholders and progress towards the product goal is discussed. During the event, the Scrum team and 
code or review what was accomplished in the sprint and what has changed in their environment. Based on this information, attendees collaborate on what to do next. The product backlog may also be adjusted to meet new opportunities. The sprint review is a working session, not just a demonstration. It is a working session and the scrum team should avoid limiting to a presentation or just a demonstration. Because just a presentation is really not giving us the opportunity to go through all three pillars of empiricism, transparency, inspection, adaptation. Are we getting that feedback that we need? The sprint review is the second to the last event of the sprint and is time boxed to a maximum of four hours for a one month sprint for shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. Sprint retrospective. The purpose of the sprint retrospective is to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness. The scrum team inspects how the last sprint went in regards to individuals, interactions, processes, tools, and their definition of done. Inspected elements often vary with the domain of work. Assumptions that led them astray are identified and their origins are explored. We're looking for the root cause, ladies and gentlemen. And their origins explored. We're looking for the root cause. How did this happen? Why did this happen? What can we do to fix it? Where did this come from? We're looking for the origin. The scrum team discusses what went well during the sprint, what problems it encountered, and how those problems were or were not solved. The scrum team identifies the most helpful changes to improve its effectiveness. The most impactful improvements are addressed as soon as possible. They may even be added to the sprint backlog for the next sprint. Are you seeing the language? Is the language consistent in the scrum guide? Remember, we talked about a principle early on, top of reading the scrum guide, self-management. So imagine if here at this point, it read this way. They must be added to the sprint backlog for the next sprint. Wouldn't that contradict what we believe in the principle of self-management, the definition of self-management? Of course it would. So that's why the language as you read the Scrum Guide also supports our principle and beliefs. So let's read it again so that you can see self-management even in this one sentence. They may even be added to the sprint backlog for the next sprint. Why would a team go through the whole process of, of the sprint retrospective to identify a continuous improvement item, not to put it in the sprint backlog? Going back to self-management, it's up to the scrum team to make that decision. I can't fathom why a team would go through all those steps and not improve for the next sprint. But as the scrum guide is calling out, it is optional for the scrum team for them to figure out what they're going to do with that continuous improvement. Item. They may even add it to the sprint backlog for the next sprint. I remember the scrum guide is not prescriptive. Self-management is new in Scrum, this 2020 re revision. We used to use the word self-organizing. We're looking at next level Scrum now. What is that next level? The next level is self-management so that we can be and become less prescriptive and really empower the team to really figure out how to get to your destination based upon your environment and all the moving parts and factors that we cannot control. We're going to empower you to figure out how to get there. The sprint retrospective concludes the sprint. It is time boxed to a maximum of three hours for a one month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. Scrum artifacts. Let's define artifact. An artifact is something man made to make something visible. Scrum has three artifacts. We have the product backlog. We have the sprint backlog and we have the increment. I came up with creative ideas to help me remember it. For example, the product backlog, I gave myself two words to make sure I would never forget. The product backlog means future work. The sprint backlog means current work. The increment means done work. So let me go back and say that again in a different way. The product backlog represents what we're going to do 
tomorrow. The sprint backlog represents what we're doing today. The increment represents what we did yesterday, past, present, and future tenses. Now with that, let's dive into Scrum Artifacts. Scrum Artifacts represents work or value. They are designed to maximize transparency of key information. Thus, everyone inspecting them has the same basis for adaptation. Each artifact contains a commitment to ensure it provides information that enhances transparency and focus against which progress can be measured. For the product backlog, it is the product goal. For the sprint backlog, it is the sprint goal. For the increment, it is the definition of done. These commitments exist to reinforce empiricism and the scrum values for the scrum team and their stakeholders. Product backlog. The product backlog is an emergent ordered list of what's needed to improve the product. It is the single source of work undertaken by the scrum team. Translation. If it's not in the product backlog, the scrum team is not going to do it. <laughs> it is the single source of truth for the scrum team. Let's read on. Product backlog items that can be done by the scrum team within one sprint are deemed ready for selection in a sprint planning event. They usually acquire this degree of transparency after refining activities. Product backlog refinement is the act of breaking down and further defining product backlog items into smaller, more precise items. This is an ongoing activity to add details such as a description, order, and size. Attributes often vary with the domain of work. Now, one thing I would like to highlight for product backlog refinement, this is an optional event that you can use in Scrum. Product backlog refinement is not a mandatory event but if you can find value out of incorporating this on your team and in your domain and your specific environment, certainly something worth introducing to the team to see if it can benefit. The developers who will be doing this work are responsible for sizing. Now, here's where you see in the Scrum Guide that it is specifically called out. Scott, who does the sizing in Scrum? The developers who will be doing the work are responsible for sizing. Ladies and gentlemen, Scrum to me is very natural to how I would operate in my personal life. If I was hiring somebody to come to my house and do work, sure, I would be telling them what I want since they will be doing the work. That sounds like the role that we identify here in the Scrum Guide. So after that collaboration of me telling them what I want and then telling me and making sure they understand my requirements and if they can or cannot do it, then if they can do it, then ultimately we're going to get to a point where he or she is going to identify this is how much it's going to cost. Okay, fantastic. Beautiful. The developers who will be doing the work are responsible for the sizing. The product owner may influence the developer by helping them to understand and select trade-offs. Ultimate decision is for the developers in terms of sizing. Commitment. Product goal. The product goal describes a future state of the product, which can serve as a target for the scrum team to plan against. The product goal is in the product backlog. The rest of the product backlog emerges to define what will fulfill the product goal. The product goal is a long-term objective for the scrum team. They must fulfill or abandon one objective before taking on the next. For my project managers out there, you can't have scope creep on a scrum team if you're doing scrum right. Back in the sprint planning, once we decide on a sprint goal, no changes will be made to endanger the sprint goal. If we're using a sprint goal, we can't have scope creep. Some more homework for you. In short, let me give you this example. The sprint goal represents why are we doing this sprint now? The product goal represents why are we doing this project? So I'm thinking of something like if our goal is to get to Mars and if we have something in our product backlog about Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, somebody, at least the scrum master should be questioning, okay, our product goal is to live on Mars. 
Why is this product backlog item in here about Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn? It has nothing to do with we, what we're trying to accomplish here. So question it. That probably should be in another product backlog. It has nothing to do with us trying to get to Mars. So just giving you something to think about in terms of that sentence. If you do scrum right, you can't have scope creep. Sprint backlog. The sprint backlog is composed of the sprint goal. Why? The set of product backlog items selected for the sprint. What? As well as an actionable plan for delivering the increment. How? Back in sprint planning, we identify why, what, how. Why are we doing the sprint? From there, that's where we identified as a whole team, we came up with the sprint goal. Now, the what is where developers went to the product backlog and, and selected everything they forecast will achieve the sprint goal that we agreed upon. And then finally, the how is when developers go talk amongst themselves and assign themselves work based upon their disciplines. Now, all that lives in the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog is a plan by and for the developers. It is a highly visible real-time picture of the work that the developers plan to accomplish during the sprint in order to achieve the sprint goal. Consequently, the sprint backlog is updated throughout the sprint as more is learned. It should have enough details that they can inspect their progress in daily scrum. Commitment. Sprint goal. The sprint goal is the single objective for the sprint. Although the sprint goal is a commitment by the developers, it provides flexibility in terms of the exact work needed to achieve it. The sprint goal also creates coherence and focus, encouraging the scrum team to work together rather than on separate initiatives. Okay, let me go back and unpack that a little bit. Now, once we decide on the sprint goal, how we get there may change along the way, but the goal is to get to the goal. Keep it in simple. If my goal was to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds, whatever that number may be, my initial plan may be I'm going to walk 10,000 steps per day. Now, at some point in time, I'm going to inspect my progress. And then what if you do that inspection point and the needle is not moving? So let's say you halfway through the sprint, you're going through daily scrums, you're doing all your events, you way through the sprints and you haven't lost a pound. Are you going to stay on that same course? You're inspecting now. Transparency is that you haven't lost anything and you halfway into the sprint. What are you going to do? Well, hopefully you're going to do something different. Maybe start running. Maybe start eating less calories. Maybe cut sugar or a plethora of other things that you can do to try to get the weight off. The goal is for you to achieve the goal. And that goal could be to lose 10 to 20 pounds. And right now you at zero. So we need to do something different, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yes, we do. Because the goal is to get to the goal. How we get there is pretty high probability that it will change along the way. The sprint goal is created during the sprint planning event and then added to the sprint backlog. As developers work during the sprint, they keep the sprint goal in mind. If the works turn out to be different than they expected, they collaborate with the product owner to negotiate the scope of the sprint backlog within the sprint without affecting the sprint goal. Increment. An increment is a concrete stepping stone towards the product goal. Each increment is additive I want you to think about Legos. Legos are additive to one another is the easiest analogy that I can get for you to visualize. But you got 10 Lego pieces scattered out on your table. As you put one Lego on another Lego, it's additive to another. Ultimately, you're trying to build something out of that Lego you have in your mind. So let's go back and reread this again. An increment is a concrete stepping stone towards the product goal. Each increment is additive to all prior increments and thoroughly verified, ensuring that all increments work together. In order to provide value, the increment must be usable. Multiple increments can be created within a sprint. The sum of the increments is presented at the sprint review, thus supporting empiricism. 
However, an increment may be delivered to stakeholders prior to the end of the sprint. The sprint review should never be considered a gate to releasing value. That's saying that if we have sprint review the end of next week, and if we have something ready, why don't we go ahead and give it to the customer now? Because the ultimate validation point is when the customer has it in his or her hand using it versus us showing it at the sprint review. Hey, you don't have to wait the next Friday to have this formal event to give it to the customer. Best, why don't we go ahead and give it to the customer as soon as it's done? So that we can have a different conversation when we go to the sprint review. Now we can talk about, hey, how is the customer using that? How is that customer using that feature? Oh, they like it. They love it. They can't stand it. <laughs> you see, we have a, a different conversation when we give it to the customer before getting to the sprint review. And now we can get that real feedback. One of the purposes of the event to get that feedback so that we can validate if we're going in the right direction. Do we need to pivot and go right? Do we need to pivot and go left? Or do we need to go back to the drawing board and start all over again, perhaps? We want to learn that sooner than later. Because up until the customer has it in his or her hands using it, we just have a hypothesis. We just have an assumption that we still haven't validated our hypothesis. Work cannot be considered part of an increment unless it meets the definition of done. Commitment. The definition of done. The definition of done is a formal description of the state of the increment when it meets the quality measures required for the product. The moment a product backlog item meets the definition of done, an increment is born. The definition of done creates transparency by providing everyone a shared understanding of what work was completed as part of the increment. If a product backlog item does not meet the definition of done, it cannot be released or even presented at the sprint review. Instead, it returns to the product backlog for future considerations. By whom? The product owner. If the definition of done for an increment is part of the standards of an organization, all scrum teams must follow it at a minimum. If it is not an organizational standard, the scrum team must create a definition of done appropriate for the product. The developers are required to conform to the definition of done. If there are multiple scrum teams working together on a product, they must mutually define and comply with the same definition of done. End note, Scrum is free and offered in this guide. The Scrum framework as outlined herein is immutable. While implementing only parts of Scrum is possible, the result is not Scrum. Scrum exists only in its entirety and functions well as a container for other techniques, methodologies, and practices. Acknowledgements. People. Of the thousands of people who have contributed to Scrum, we should single out those who were instrumental at the start. Jeff Sutherland worked with Jeff McKenna and John Scumniatios. And Ken Swaber worked with Mike Smith and Chris Martin, and all of them worked together. Many others contributed in the ensuing years, and without their help, Scrum would not be refined as it is today. Scrum Guide History. Ken Swaber and Jeff Sutherland first co-presented Scrum at the OOPSLA conference, OOPSLA, in 1995. It essentially documented the learning that Ken and Jeff gained over the previous few years and made public the first formal definition of Scrum. The Scrum Guide documents Scrum as developed, evolved, and sustained for 30 plus years by Jeff Sutherland and Ken Swaber. Other sources provide patterns, processes, and insights that complement the Scrum framework. These may increase productivity, value, creativity, and satisfaction with the results. The complete history of Scrum is described elsewhere. To honor the first places where it was tried and proven, we recognize Individual Inc., News page, Fidelity Investment, and IDX, now GE Medical. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you ever wondered about my teaching style, now you had first-hand experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do scrum dumb, nor do I do boring. 
Thank you for joining us on this transformative journey through the Scrum Guide with commentary at Scrum Academy. We hope that our exploration of the Scrum principles, practices, and real-world applications have enriched your understanding and sparked your curiosity. How do we do? Did we deliver? I hope we deliver. I tried my best. I worked up a sweat today to deliver value. For you, at Scrum Academy, we are committed to empowering individuals like you to become true Scrum Masters. Equipped with the knowledge, the skill, the mindset to drive agile transformation, we believe that by embracing Scrum, you can unlock your full potential and create a lasting impact in your professional and personal life. We have students from all over the world, and we want to make sure that we bring Scrum to anybody who wants to have Scrum a part of their professional, in regards of their financial circumstances. I do have a campaign, so as y'all navigating through the website, go to the shop tab. I would love for you to be a part of it. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to sponsor as many students and give away as many scholarships as I financially am able to do. Go to scrubacademy.com forward slash shop. And anytime you buy anything there, all proceeds are going to go to provide scholarships for somebody. So that money won't be an issue for them this education and this knowledge that we are offering. That's what Scrum Academy is all about. We're about bridging. We're about providing opportunities to everybody. Because I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that we can't build a mix anything until we have people with us from different walks of life, different perspectives. We can't get to Mars at all day unless we have enough different perspectives to get there and to get there and build this amazing place we call Agile, that I call Agile Sphere. As you continue your journey, we encourage you to stay engaged with Scrum Academy's offerings, including exclusive proprietary classes and the vibrant community we foster. Keep nurturing your passion for innovation, high-performing teams, and don't forget about your personal growth. Yeah, I use Scrum in my personal life, too. I didn't mention that, but I figured y'all already doing that. Aren't you using Scrum in your personal life? I you know, talk about that in another video. I would challenge you to read the Scrum Guide daily, daily, daily. No joke. I'm not kidding on that. Read it daily for it to reveal itself to you. Ask it questions as I hopefully sparked your curiosity. Why is this? Why? What? Ask the question. Just like we did in kindergarten class. Remember, Scrum is not just a framework. It's a way of thinking, collaborating, continuously improving. Embrace the values of Scrum. Embrace empiricism. The three pillars are transparency, inspection, and adaptation as you navigate through your projects and as you work towards achieving your goals, whether it's business or personal related. And we're going to be here to service all your needs. We don't do Scrum down because if we do our job right, we are creating a beautiful world. The Scrum Guide. It, to me, is a blueprint for us creating the workplace that we all deserve, that we all can unleash our superpower. And to me, the, the Scrum Guide represents the blueprint for how we're going to achieve that. And if you're using Scrum, it's not the way it was intended. I was identified when I was reading the Scrum Guide to you. It's highly unlikely that's going to happen. <laughs> so, so why are we doing this? Why are we playing this game? Because we want to make this a better world for you and your children. Everybody in it, present tense and future tense. We hope the commentary provided throughout this audio has brought the Scrum Guide to life, making it more relatable and actionable for you. As you move forward, continue to seek opportunities for growth, apply what you have learned, and inspire others to embark on their Scrum journeys. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again for choosing Scrum Academy as your guide through the Scrum Guide with commentary. We wish you great success as you embrace the Scrum principles, cultivate a culture of excellence, and make a lasting impact on the world. My wish for you is to be legendary, and I want you to be super duper legendary. Because if you can do that, certainly, you know, super duper. Group of people making significant change. At the greatest Scrum master of all time, that will be Anatomy Feet. More to come. Talk more about dynamic feet in class. I wanted this to be the first podcast for the Scrum Academy channel. 
Because everything we do is all centered upon the scrum guy. Everything that we teach you, everything I tell you, whatever situation you're dealing with at work, if we ever have a one-on-one, I would take you back to the scrum guy. I would take you back to the scrum guy. It's our single source of truth. It's our Bible is scrum practitioners, the single source of truth. As we look at the scrum guide, your environment in which you're working in, we should be trying to figure out how can we bridge what we see in that book into what we see in our eyes. That's the goal we're trying to do. Remember? What game are we playing? Remember at Scrum Academy, we empower, we equip, we foster. See you next time. Have an amazing, legendary day.